Hello everyone, welcome to this interesting video, 2020 has been a certain odd year for sports and given the fact that last minute in July we found out that the playoffs were going to be expanded to 16 teams to keep things exciting, well here we are, thank goodness. Despite the fact that there were some scares with COVID-19 spreading among teams, that we were able to get all 60 games in of the 2020 regular season. The shortest ever in MLB history. There was some ups and downs with the Yankees. Well, I uh, get into, but uh, it's the, another lost season for the Mets. The future does look bright with hopefully Steve Cohen's second attempt trying to buy the Mets. And uh, hopefully there'll be a new GM. Maybe Brody... Fan Brody's gone. I know that. But maybe rumors about Sandy Alderson coming back could happen. But uh, let's get into the standings and just review team by team. So here we go. First up, let's go to the Tampa Bay Rays. They finished with a record of 40-20. and 20. Second best record in baseball in the season. Yankees finished with a record of 33 and 27. So not too bad. I mean, it could be worse. You know, the Yankees did have to fight to stay in second place down the line. And uh, they will get to a depleted Cleveland Indian team that looked so mediocre. I mean, so did the White Sox, too. Which we'll get into that. But uh, the Yankees decently have a chance. You know, it, if they stay healthy, they, they, they can beat anyone. The Toronto Blue Jays, um, they had a decent season. Look, I said in July the Blue Jays are possibly going to be a part of this division for many years to come. They looked bright this season. It's going to be good for Flag Guerrero Jr. to get some postseason experience, I guess. But just a disappointment on... The other teams in the AL East will move on to the Orioles. Uh, they look like they were going to even sneak past the Yankees. It was so scary the Yankees might have even missed the playoffs. But the Yankees got hot at the right time this month. It mattered the most. And uh, Baltimore finished with 25-35 and 35 and the Red Sox finished 24-36. and 36. And I will mention... The Red Sox did fire their manager yesterday, so a whole lot of messes coming up in Baston. <laughs> okay, now let's get into the AL Central. First up, the Minnesota Twins. And I'll center it so that way you all can get an idea. Let's see if this, this helps. It. Yeah, that's better. Okay, Twins finished with a record of 36 and 24. Uh, it had to come down the wire to figure out who was going to be second place. But down the line, Cleveland and Chicago. Cleveland got to be in second place, so they're going to face the Yankees. And I'll show you the bracket uh, in just a second. White Sox finished with a record of 35-25. and 25. They looked good for a majority of the season. It's just that down the line, they, uh, they couldn't look so good. Hey, for my friend Jerome, who's hoping for a White Sox Cubs series, he's still hoping for it. Uh, could happen. Could happen. Because again, with, with, again, 2020 has just been an odd year. And he was in agreement with me. It was a, a playoffs or bust this year for the Cubs because the Cubs looked like they were going to be contenders this year. We were right about that. And then everybody said. What about the other team on the south side of Chicago? Well, they made it. So let's see what happens. And I will mention, not just for uh, Jerome who loves his Chicago Cubs to death. Uh, this is the first time since 2008 that both the White Sox and the Cubs are in the playoffs. So this is very interesting. All right, so. Kansas City Royals 26 and 34, Detroit Tigers 23 and 35. Moving on to the AL West, I'm going to say this right now, if I had to put a better team 
that is better than Minnesota and better than every other team in the Central, which is the Oakland A's. Um, their bullpen looked phenomenal this year. They were definitely able to take care of business down the line. They won games that were supposed to matter, playing all American League West teams. The only team that seemed to give the A's the problem this year in the West, because again, you had to be in specific area. It was, you know, West versus West, Central versus Central, East versus East. Now it's different because you have the bubble, and we'll get to that. Um, in fact, hang on here. I just wanted to see if I can pull up the uh, the real bracket. MLB.com had the real bracket, so I had to pull that up. All right, so um, the bullpen looked very good for the A's down the line. So you had a good chance with Oakland. I mean, they could... Again, anything goes... Remember this, Oakland has not been to the ALCS since 2006. And sadly for Oakland A fans, I don't have to remind you what happened with uh, Maglio Ordonez in 2006 with the Detroit Tigers. That's a whole different story. Okay, um, Houston Astros finished with a record of 29 and 31. Jerome, if you're waiting, I'll get to the Cubs. Just staying on here. I know he's, I know he's antsy for it. Okay, Astros 29 and 31. Mariners 27 and 33, Angels 26 and 34, uh, Rangers 22 and 38. Um, I'll just say this right now: the eight seed's a joke because the Astros look so pathetic this season. You know, the American League is open right now, but being honest, the only two realistic teams that have a legit chance of contending are the Yankees and the Athletics. And I will say this, both the Yankees and the A's have good bullpens. So I really hope if the Yankees are going on a deep run, and I'll make a prediction on why we are going to have a Dodgers-Yankee series anyway, but we'll get into that. Okay, let's get into the National League East, where I'll get into why I'm disappointed with the Philadelphia Phillies. First up, the Atlanta Braves, 35-25. and 25. I thought Philadelphia was going to win this division. I honestly said the Phillies were going to win this division or the Nationals. The Nationals had an awful season, and we'll get into that in just a second. Um, Braves, 35-25. and 25. For the first time since 2003, the Marlins are in the playoffs, which in a normal season... I bet you the Phillies would have a comeback. I'm sure Joel Girardi through 60 games would not be happy that the Phillies were in a bad predicament. Okay? That would not be tolerated in a normal season. So, um, if there is a full 162, the Phillies have a bright future. I'm very disappointed with them. Even though I'm not a Phillies fan, the Phillies had a lot of good pieces. Now, you look at the Braves and the Marlins. They're not making it to this World Series. That's for sure. Do you really think Atlanta and Miami are contenders? No. And we'll get to the Cubs and Dodgers later on here. But Phillies had a good team. They look like, on paper, a playoff caliber team. And what happened was they blew their chances. They, ha they could have won yesterday. They could have taken care of business against Tampa. And the Phillies just couldn't get out of their own way this weekend. And, you know, if you're a Philly fan, you should be very disappointed. This was a lost season. You guys should honestly be in the playoffs, but you couldn't You couldn't beat the Rays. The Rays really weren't playing for anything anyway, so they already had the American League East. Why couldn't you just take care of business and hope the Yankees would have helped you? You know, the Yankees didn't help the Phillies anyway, so... That would have been extra help for Philadelphia. The Mets, surprisingly, almost snuck in. They almost could have gotten in, but the problem was uh, the Mets played horrible in the doubleheader over the weekend on Saturday. I watched that game, and it was just honestly a mess. Um, the only issue is, is Jacob deGrom going to win the Cy Young? Maybe. But, um... I want to mention something interesting very quickly with the Yankees. 
Um, I'll scroll up. Um, I got an email from the Yankees uh, today. And even though you will see this on Tuesday. But um, couple Yankees had uh, awards that I need to um, bring up. If the email would even load, that would be great. But it seems my email is not loading. So let me see if it works on LTE. But I did get an email from the Yankees. Yeah, here we go. Um, it says here in the email that um, DJ LeMayhew won the Major League Batting Championship, led both American and National League, 364. And I'll even get to the stats later on, you know, just to see if I can pull up MLB stats. But if I can't pull up the MLB stats... I don't know what's going on with my internet today. It's so pathetic. It is really pathetic what Spectrum does to me. I will see if I can pull up my other network. and well, I'll read along here. May you won 364. Voight, 22 home runs. So that's interesting. There we go. MLB stat. For Jerome, let's find out if anybody from the Cubs led anything. That's a good question. <laughs> no, we want CBS Sports. They, they they have it organized. They have it organized. Anyhow, let's keep the suspense waiting for Jerome. Mets and Nats finished last, uh, tie for last place, so no need to get into that. Now, let's get to the good stuff. The Chicago Cubs, 34-26. and 26. The Cubbies had a good season. Pitching was consistent. They would get the big hits when it mattered. So, therefore, the Chicago Cubs are back in the playoffs. And they're supposed to be contenders... They have a decent chance. I'm not saying it will happen, but everybody's going to favor the Dodgers. The Cardinals, 30 and 28. Not too bad. Could be worse. The Cincinnati Reds, 31 and 29. So, better than nothing. Brewers make it in with a record of 29 and 31. So, I don't know how the National League would end up in that sense, but uh, it's still a possibility you're going to have a Cub, Dodger, and LCS. Dodgers, best record overall in baseball, 43 and 17. I said keep an eye on the Padres. I was completely correct about the Padres. They have a very bright future ahead of them. They look like really a really good team this year. And the Padres have really met my expectations. Because the teams I look at at the National League normally, you know, I would have assumed Philadelphia would have gotten in. I was correct about the Cubs. You know, maybe the Mets... On a decent year, they could sneak in if they don't have drama with ownership and they don't have drama with the manager. But Yeah, look at this. If I'm correct, I think the Pirates had the worst overall record in baseball, 19-41. and 41. Who had the worst record in the American League? Oh, see, this is so pathetic. The worst record in the American League went to the Texas Rangers at 22-38. and 38. Ah, oh. see, this is baseball in 2020, right? Right? Okay, so, moving on. NL West, Dodgers 43-17, and 17, Padres 37-23, Giants 29-31, Colorado Rockies 26-34, and the diamond back to 25 and 35. So, let's get into the stats. Ah, oh, and 
See what I mean? I hate when they tell you to turn off the ad blocker. It's so annoying. Okay. Let's see if I can pull up the batting averages. Okay, here we go. First up in the batting average category, Freddie Freeman wins the National League batting title. Um, I, I don't know why this is not pulling up. I do apologize. Um, here we go. Freddie Freeman finishes with a 341 average. Move this a little bit to the left. You know what? Let me zoom out. That's a better idea. Let me let me zoom out of this. That's better. All right. Whoa. Okay. That's uh, a little bit too small. That's better. Okay. So, Freddie Freeman, 341 average. Marcel Asunia wins the National League home run title with 18 home runs. RBIs goes to Freddie Freeman. He had 53 RBIs. So let's see who led the uh, National League in hits. That's very important. Trey Turner won in the hits category. And then Jose Abreu got the most hits in the American League. So again, two Yankees... Won two awards, which is incredible. Amazing. Okay, anything else I need to get into? Ah! Okay, this is interesting. Now let's take a look at pitching. In the American League, the most wins goes to Shane Bieber, who the Yankees will play in game one of their wild card round, the National League winner goes to you, Darvish. So, for Jerome, that's a big deal for him. Somebody from the Cubs actually gets an award. But the issue is, does Jacob DeGrom get the Cy Young? Because it uh, looks like it may not happen. And it may happen. Let's see. Okay, ERA goes to Shane Bieber. So it sounds like <laughs> Shane Bieber's going to win the American League Cy Young Award. In the National League, um, I don't know. I mean, in the National League, it's tough. I mean, do you give it to Darvish? Do you give it to... I don't know. This is a good question. Do you give it to Darvish? Do you give it to Bauer? Because Bauer had a 173 ERA, but DeGrom had the second most strikeouts. Now, um, I did see something interesting. That Garrett Cole had eight wins this season, so um, I'd be shocked if Garrett Cole won the Cy Young because, honestly, Shane Bieber's going to win it. Um, currently, I'd say this. Your contenders are going to be Darvish, Trevor Bauer, or Jacob DeGrom for the Cy Young. Out of all of the guys right now, I would say gets the award. Maybe it's Bauer because he had a really low ERA. I mean, if you don't give you don't give the guy who had the low ERA in the National League and he had the third most strikeouts. He had 100 strikeouts this season. I mean, maybe in the playoffs he makes his case, but I don't know. I mean, the Reds could be the Reds could be the ultimate wild card. I don't know. I mean, that's uh, that's up in the air right now. Okay, let's go to the bracket. So for the bracket, you're looking at an interesting situation here. You're looking at teams playing. At their home stadium. So the home teams like Tampa, Houston, no, no, Houston, Tampa, Oakland, Minnesota, Cleveland get the games, right? National League, it's Dodgers, Padres, Cubs, Braves. Now, this is how the bubble would work National League teams would play in Texas, one part plays in Houston, another part plays in Arlington. For the West Coast, 
Now, this is kind of alarming if you're any of these teams here who have to play in the ALDS. I like how they finally have converted to a bubble. And thank goodness, because uh, we don't need any more games getting canceled. So hopefully the bubble will work. I mean, the bubble worked in the NHL. The bubble worked in the NBA. So the bubble should work in MLB. All right. LA is a problem because the issue with LA is you have the wildfires and that's a very complicated situation. If the Yankees do somehow beat the Indians, and I don't know because people think the Yankees are going to pound Shane Bieber, which could be possible. Maybe the murderer's rope thing happens, but I don't know. So... Let's get into Curtis Granderson's predictions. But before we do that, odds right now think it's going to be Yankees and Dodgers. For Jerome, I'm sorry. This is not looking good for you. But again, it's 2020. Anything can happen. I mean, he's, he and I are still upset that movie theaters are closed in New York. But that's a whole different story. Okay, let's get into um, what happens. Right, I'm sorry, but I don't see any legitimate... I don't know. I'll make my own predictions. Let me be fair. Let me make my own. Okay. So let's be realistic about what I think is going to happen. And then we'll get to the schedule, and then I'll wrap it up. So, first up, Tampa's going to win. They'll move on. I think this is going to go to a best of three. But I think the Yankees... Now, in the wild card round, this is how it works. It's two out of three. So, two out of three wins. The Yankees and the Indians somehow are 1-1. One, one. I think Tampa takes care of business against Toronto. So, the Yankees will move on. And uh, then you got Minnesota and Houston... I honestly think right now, just the way things have ended up, the Twins are going to move on, and it's going to be Oakland. I'm sorry, White Sox fans, but you're just not ready to move on. It's it's sad, but, you know, that's the way things end up. Okay, so that gives us a five-game series with the Yankees and the Rays. I think the Yankees can win in four. Tampa may get a game. Because the Yankees are going to be healthy. You know, if the Yankees have everything going for them and they, they stay healthy, they got a shot. You know, if Stanton and Judge are hitting home runs, and um, I'm making sure I got this correctly, if Voight hits home runs, they're a dangerous team. They move on to the ALCS. Twins, uh... And that's going to be interesting. I think they will sweep the Astros. The Astros are the Astros are going to be so pathetic that Dusty Baker may be crying. I'll be very surprised because Nelson Cruz is going to hit home runs. Because he's been hitting so many home runs this year, it's crazy. Then you got Oakland and Chicago. I said Oakland's going to win. They have a really good bullpen. The bullpens really helped the A's out this year. So. Oakland moves on. Therefore, I'm going to say this right now. Yankees in four against Tampa. Um, I think the Twins A's game the series is going to end up in five. But I think Oakland does move on. So ALCS will be Yankees taking on the A's. National League. Um, Dodgers easily take two against the Brewers. Um, I will say the Padres move on to be fair. So San Diego moves on. This is where I think the Dodgers will take care of business. The Dodgers will take care of business against the Padres. The Padres look good, but um, I think it'll end up in four. So that means you have Dodgers move on to the NLCS. Cubs will take two against Miami. Miami you know, Miami's a fool's team. You know, I'd be surprised. But again, each time Miami's been a wild card, 1997, 2003, Good things have happened, so we'll see what happens. And for Jerome's sake, please beat the Marlins. 
because we don't want to have another 03 incident again. Even though there will not be a Bartman and there will be no fans. But <laughs> Braves and Reds. I think this will be a decent series. But I think the Reds are going to move on. The Braves always seem to collapse at the wrong time. So the Reds will move on. And then the Cubs will take care of the Reds. So therefore, you will have a Dodger and Red series. I think both ALCS and NLCS could go six games. But in the end, I think that's the path for a Yankee Dodger World Series. I think I'm going to be right about this. If I'm wrong, then you can call me crazy. So um, one last thing. Let's just go to the... Um, Let's just go to the um, schedule very quickly. So, for the first time in 25 years, ABC will be airing live Major League Baseball. So, you'll have Astros and Twins at 2 p.m. today. Then you'll have the Marlins and Cubs on ABC on Wednesday. So, um, two out of three series, that's going to be very complicated. Then you'll have the division series from October 5th to October 10th. Then you'll have the championship series from October 11th through the 18th. And then the World Series would fall from October 20th. And then if there's a Game 7, it would go to October 28th. So, there you have it. That's my thoughts of the 2020 season. It's finally over. We get a postseason. Let's hope all the teams stay healthy. Nobody catches COVID-19. And we have a very good postseason. And uh, October gives us surprises. We'll see what happens. So with that, thank you all for watching. Until the next one, please take care.